The Res Chef Cooking Show uses everyday ingredients to make meals that are quick, healthy, and tasty. Host chefs Jody and Genevieve are young, busy moms from the Flathead Reservation. Their lives are hectic and fast-paced. Who better to share their favorite dishes? On this episode of Res Chef, Lance Hawkins assists Jody and Genevieve in whipping up the ultimate bachelor food, crock-pot chili. Then, Anita Dupuy helps make a classic shepherd's pie with potatoes, green beans, and deer meat. I'm Jody, and this is Genevieve, and we're the hosts of Res Chef. During today's episode, we're going to have a special appearance by Lance Hawkins. Lance is a tribal member, and he works at the fitness center in St. Ignatius. Lance is going to be with us today for the next half hour, helping us put together a crock pot chili. So while this gets hot, we're going to put in some garlic and onions. And when you cut them the second way, they come out perfectly diced. Smelling really good. When we get the onions in, then we'll put the deer meat in. And this is deer burger. And if you don't have that available to you, um, like my husband, he doesn't really care for the wild game. I just look for the healthier cuts of beef, a leaner beef. And when they are on sale, I just stock up with that. So. Before you put the meat in, you're going to want to turn the heat down from high a little bit. Usually you want to wait till the onions start to get a little bit translucent. Go ahead. I'm going to get it nice and browned up. And then after we get that all together and browned, we'll put that into the crock pot. These dry beans um, are at the Commodity Warehouse. This is a really great way to go. And if you use these kind, we're actually going to use canned today because it's a little bit quicker. Um, but you just rinse and, and soak these um, for about a half an hour and then let them stand in the water for about an hour. And then drain them and then you can use them just like you can the canned beans. Some beans come in a sauce that's seasoned already and um, those ones you will rinse. But we're going to rinse these. We've got red beans, um, we've got navy beans, kidney beans. Um, beans are high in fiber, they're really good for you, they fill you up. We're also going to use one large can of crushed tomatoes, and again, organic, no salt added. And those can go directly into the pot. We're also going to use some tomato sauce, and we'll add a little bit of water, and you can kind of do it to taste. So one of the things that's the most fun about cooking is the tasting and you can just continue to taste and season and tweak things until they're exactly how you want them. And the great thing about crock pot meals is, especially for busy people who work or single parents, you put everything in in the morning, set it, go to work, come home and your dinner's made. So as everything starts to kind of meld together, that's when you want to start adding your seasonings. And we're going to use um, fresh black pepper. Um, in place of salt, we're going to use this Bragg's amino acid, which is very much like soy sauce or tamari sauce. And you want to use it sparingly until you get used to the concentration of it, but it tastes just like salt, if not a little bit better. And it's definitely better for you. Want a couple of tablespoons? Yes, please. This is looking delicious. Okay, and um, we have some cayenne pepper, don't we, here? Let's 
see. Yep, we've already put that in. We've also got a little bit of basil and oregano and some Italian seasonings. And again, you just want to keep tasting and adding and tweaking. We've also got a little bit of rosemary here. That's also a very good flavor with meat and beans. Rosemary is something that's very easy to grow as well, and it's a fun little, we've got some fresh rosemary right here. It's something that you can grow indoors, and you just pinch off a couple of, of the leaves as you cook. Basil is also a good one that you can make in the summertime. The rosemary is a little bit like pine needles, so sometimes you might want to crunch them up. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can just use your hands like that. So Lance, you want to talk to us about uh, one of the programs that you're doing, the Walking the Res? Yeah, sure. We got Walking the Res, which is going to be coming up um, on Valentine's Day. We started every year, February 14th um, through Mother's Day. And it's pretty much, it was started uh, through uh, the diabetes program from Tribal Health. It's sponsored by them. And <clears throat> what it consists of, and it pretty much has uh, starts out, with uh, you know each individual walking around the res, which I think they recorded about 200 miles. You know, starting from Evro and going through Arley, hitting Ravala, going to Saint Ignatius, up through uh, Ronan, Polson, and then through Elmo, coming back all the way around so through Hot Springs. Walking the reservation? Well, no, I mean not literally, but oh. that's mile-wise. You know, oh, that's so. the route that that they would take. So you're major. All the way back to yeah. The distance. So. So you put counters on, right? Actually, that's yeah, measured through pedometers. So, yeah, we have uh, everybody uh, who joined up calling like once a week to tell us, you know, how they're doing and kind of keep it logged in to see where they're at. And we also have uh, we had kids' night going on um, at the fitness center every Thursday night. Um, we have kids to get together to kind of work on fit fitness, you know, because they get like the same routine, you know, they go play video games or something like that. And we kind of wanted to work on. Yeah, getting them doing stuff, you know. Um, so we have, uh, have them playing dodgeball, you know, at the fitness center. We got uh, the Dance Dance Revolution there, so they can, like, have oh, little so competitions. Oh, yeah, that's the pretty neat. Uh, and we're actually supposed to get the Nintendo Wii pretty soon, too, and I'm getting oh, looking great. forward to that. Then I'll have, you know, I'll be all excited about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> A physical activity. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. For, for kids to do on Thursday yeah. nights. Yeah. Is there an age limit, or...? You know, so just open to whoever wants to come. we've been through that, and I think uh, I would say probably, you know, anything from or as far as kids wise, probably seven to 18. You know, if they get too young, then they get pretty emotional, and they do, <laughs> yeah, and it makes it, you know, they more get more babysitting, yeah. Instead of. <laughs> well, uh, which isn't too bad if their parents are there, you yeah. know, then you know, I, I'd, I'd encourage it anyway, you know, because then they get to see the big kids do stuff, and it makes them more, you know, more eager to want to go do things, so. Yeah, um, I know my kids love to exercise, and we just started going to um, SKC's new gym, mm -hmm. and they just run, and they try to make baskets. Boy, that's a nice gym that they yeah, built there. I can't the, believe it. The walking track. Oh, cow. Like, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, have a finished product to try. One that's been cooking Trade. for several hours. <laughs> and then we wanted to point out um, that instead of using sour cream, you can substitute this uh, plain yogurt, and it's just a lot healthier for you. And then we can also top it with some cilantro. If cilantro is a little bit too strong for some people, you can also use parsley. We've got some dried parsley flakes here. It's a milder version. Want to scoop? Sure. All right. More? Is that good? A uh, little bit more. All right, thanks. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm the spicy girl, so I always add <laughs> a lot more pepper at the end. Spice girl. I like pepper, too. <laughs> a little cilantro. All right. This is looking wonderful. This is hot. Smells really good. It does. This is a great wintertime mm -hmm. meal.
Lance, do you want to tell us about um, what you think the importance of exercise is and, and how the all the great new fitness centers that are coming up around here play in that? Yeah, sure. Um, as far as exercise goes, I, I believe the Surgeon General says, you know, 30 minutes a day for five days a week, you know, which is, you know, probably far more than most of us even have time for, you know, but when you can fit that time in, you know, it's, you know, I mean, health comes first, so. Um, Right now, currently, I think we're going to be, they're putting another uh, fitness center in Elmo. They actually, they're going to transfer the bowling alley up there. And they're going to have like a, a new exercise equipment. You know, they're just going to to totally redo it. Um, and like you were saying about the, the gym up in uh, SKC, you know, they have the running yeah, up there. Okay. They're going to be putting one up there too in Elmo. So nice. it'll be really nice. Um, that I don't know exactly projection date for that, but I know they're working on it right now. Um, Ronan's uh, hours are pretty similar to ours. You know, five thirty in the morning to eight thirty at night right now. Um, it's really good. Yeah, Works for good. everybody. Yeah. And then the of course the new gym and fitness center that was put up in our league is is really nice. That's you know, beautiful. if you ever have a chance to get up there and take a look at the nice work that they've done, it's a really beautiful place to work out and stuff. We're getting so. a lot of state of the art centers around here on the res. Yeah, I think it's a, a big deal, you know. I think uh, the people around here are facing some health problems, you know, as far as diabetes, you know, is actually getting to be pretty huge. And, you know, I think they're, the best way to combat it is exercise, you know, which is, you know, free and, you know, everybody should be doing it, so. Exercise uh, and making small, simple changes in the way that you cook. The way that you eat. You know, absolutely. Is a major part, too. So. Yeah, I became a label reader. <laughs> I, so now I, I check out what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. I, when I go grocery shopping, I look and see what's in it. And uh, um, the first ingredient listed is the one that is the most in the biggest quantity in that food. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I try to stay away from all the sugars and high fructose corn syrups and as much as I can. And I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I've learned that myself. Yeah. Even how much food I intake, you know. If I just hold back a little bit more, then I'm just like, oh, it's hard to do, you know, because it tastes so good. But yeah, it's <laughs> taste buds in some time. I think water helps me a lot. Yeah. I drink mm -hmm. a lot of water, and I don't have the strong cravings and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, I yeah, think water good. plays a big part in it. Stay away from the pops and all those sugar drinks. A great meal for busy people, uh, single parents like Lance and myself who work 40 plus hours a week. You can just throw the ingredients in in the morning and come home and the dinner is finished. There's a lot to be said for that, not having to cook when you get home. Thanks for being here, right. Lance. Right. We appreciate your help Thank and you. your comments. It's and nice right. to visit Thanks with you. To Today we have a special appearance by Anita Dupuy. Uh, we are going to make a dish that is, um, we call it green bean casserole, but it's also like a shepherd's pie, depending on what vegetable you put in it. But let's get started. All right, we've got our pan nice and hot. We're going to start off by cutting our onions. And after we get some onions going, you want to put some olive oil on? There we go. We're going to brown up the ground beef, or excuse me, not ground beef, it's, <laughs> I think this is deer burger. Okay, we're using olive oil. This is a uh, substitute for canola oil or vegetable oil because those are both bad for your cholesterol, but olive oil is actually good for you. So it's a healthy alternative, it's the substitute. Yep, we'll we'll Oh, and we have, um, on the side, we had already peeled these potatoes. There were about seven potatoes, and we mashed them. And we used um, this broth as a substitute for um, the milk so that it got creamy, but it didn't have all of the... So what kind of broth is this? Vegetable Jody? broth, and it's a, um, organic low sodium. And that's one thing that you want to look for on the packages to make sure it has low sodium so you don't have all the added stuff. And this will give it flavor and texture, make it creamier without having butter or dairy products. And why is low sodium important? They claim there's a link between sodium and heart disease. Okay, but, so we don't want heart disease, but yeah. so we're gonna do no yeah. or low sodium. And so we love the flavor. 
This Bragg's amino acid is a good healthy substitute for salt. Um, it's kind of like uh, tamari or soy sauce. It's got a very good flavor and this is not bad for us and it's great for diabetics. So we're going to use that in place of salt for the seasoning. Here we've got the onions nice and translucent. We'll add the deer burger. Is this a dish you make for your family? Again? We do. We have green bean casserole, but this is, um, I know everyone on the res has the green bean casserole, and I see it at the deli store and stuff like that, but this is a healthier version of that. So we're all, we're just trying to show that you can have the same foods, but just prepare them healthier. So, and what are the things that are making this healthier? We are using the deer meat mm -hmm. instead of beef because it's a lot leaner and, um, the animals, we know that they're eating grass. No antibiotics, yeah. no hormones. Yep, no steroids of any kind. So we know what we're eating. And um, so we're doing that. And plus it's free. It's free for us on the rest. So mm -hmm. we go, like, I think my dad or my brother's got this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot cheaper. But if I do use hamburger, I try to find the leanest that I can. And I watch for sales. And, and what would be the leanest? that you could probably get in a grocery store well, if you're getting beef? 7% um, fat. Okay. I like to look for 7% fat. And I can find it for like $1.99 a pound at Safeway on sale. And then I just buy like $50 worth of it and put it in my freezer. I store it in um, little sandwich baggies, and that's like about a pound and a half. In this particular recipe, we're going to substitute, a lot of times traditionally it's made with tater tots, we are going to substitute tater tots completely and we're going to use mashed potatoes that we made, as Jody said, with the vegetable broth, no butter, no milk. And instead of um, making using cream of mushroom soup, this is going to kind of make its own broth. Um, we're going to use this again and put it in the meat before the meat is cooked all the way through. So the meat is actually going to cook in the broth. Now we're doing three cups. And this is, again, so we don't use the cream of mushroom soup because it has a lot of sodium in it and a lot of fat. Yeah, a lot of fat. So we're trying to just make this um, a healthy version of the same food. And you know, you can, you can buy these broths, but you can also make your own. How mm -hmm. everybody ends up taking the part of the onion off the peels and the celery tops and all that. And usually they throw them away, but you can just put those in a pan and put water with it and make your own vegetable. Huh. And then this will, the meat, we will keep this in here until the meat cooks all the way through. It's still pink. Um, this is, we're using two to three pounds of meat for this recipe. And we're gonna be seasoning it with several different things. Jody. This is oregano. And we're gonna put in about a teaspoon of oregano. And then this is dried parsley. So the flour thickens it instead of like a mushroom soup or something like that? Right. So this is going to be our bottom layer of the casserole. That's what we're going to put in first. And we want it to be a little bit thicker so it's not runny. Um, and what we're going to do is once we get all the flour in, we're going to cover it and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. And then it will be thick enough to put in a, as our bottom layer. And for diabetics, a good substitute um, for the mashed potatoes would be sweet potatoes. They have a, a lower glycemic index and cause less of a blood sugar spike. So we're going to use regular potatoes today, um, which you can, you know, we eat in moderation because it does um, cause a little bit higher blood sugar. But good idea. You could also de-emphasize the amount of potatoes and put in more veggies Absolutely. to reduce, reduce that. Yeah. So what, are we, what else are we putting in this thing today? Well, we have two choices. Um, my friend's mom, she uses this one. This is the mixed vegetables, and this is frozen. We're using frozen vegetables. We're substituting instead of, I know a lot of people would just dump in a can of green beans, mm -hmm. but the green beans, when they are canned, they put a lot of sodium in them, and so we're trying to get away from that. So this is a healthier choice than canned, and even healthier than that would be as if they were fresh. So there's no salt on these at all? Oh, they let's don't, see. They don't salt these? 
And here, green beans. Just green beans. And that's, um, read the labels. That's what I, I just, I can't stress enough. Just read the labels. And the first ingredient is always the biggest amount that's in there. And so this one is just green beans. And um, so this is really good. Let's see what this one says. Carrots, corn, and peas. Organic carrots, organic corn, organic peas with a peas with a trace of salt. So this one has a little bit in it. So this is um, the healthier choice, and um, my family likes green beans, so I think we'll make this one today. The research is starting to show that the people who live in the northern climates literally don't get the sun at the right angle enough times out of the year to to keep your serotonin levels hmm. up. So one substitute for that is vitamin D, um, and the best source is the sun, but you can also get it in um, nutritional supplements to take that vitamin D during those dark months. It does help. Yeah, I think that physical activity is a big thing for me. It is. It, I, get, I feel more energy when I'm active, and I just feel like more positive. Yeah. And especially with my kids. And exercise stuff. is the other way that the serotonin is affected in the brain. I don't know if people realize that, but it's not just from the sunshine, but it's from the exercise. It's from what people eat. Oh, yeah, and you can even think of, like, if my kids were in the house all day not doing anything, they would be crabby. And so if you mm -hmm. let them out and use the energy, they mm -hmm. seem happier. We're going to put the hamburger mm. um, gravy one on the bottom, and then we put the vegetables in oh, the middle, okay. and then the potatoes on top. And I know a lot of people, um, like my kids, like to have cheese on the top. And um, it's all right, but the, I think I'm going to start substituting a healthier cheese, and that's mozzarella. And so instead of using like a Colby Jack or something on top, we're going to put mozzarella on it, or you know, just nothing at all, and you can bake it and let the top so that your potatoes get nice and crispy and then you wouldn't need the cheese on the top. So whatever level of health, health you want. <laughs> All right, Let's see if I could do this. So that's our first layer. And then you put the green beans on top. And then we'll just spoon the potatoes on. So Jody, what's gotten you so motivated? The TLC cam. <laughs> I just love the traditional living challenge. And um, I wanted to be healthy, but I just didn't know how. And so when I went to the camp, I, I learned that it's um, the quality of the food, the healthiness of the food and not the quantity. Because I kept trying to diet. And by um, making smaller portions, and I was always hungry, mm. and I was addicted to sugar, and so um, uh, my sister told me that she was going to go to this camp, and that it was uh, to get healthier and to learn how to live healthier, and then there was also the cultural aspects of it also, but I was going mainly to learn how to be healthier, and I learned that I didn't have to you know, cut back on my food intake, but just change the foods I was taking in. So what are the main changes you've made? The main changes I've made is I have tried um, to stay away from dairy because I knew my body didn't like dairy, um, but I didn't know what else to eat. Cause it looks like we could eat it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the beans the are be still frozen. Beans might be yeah. a little cold. <laughs> Looks like we could eat it right now. But I, um, I also, I, we didn't have any bread up at the camp. And no bread. Did we have any potatoes? We didn't have any potatoes at the camp you went to. Right. No. We didn't. We, we did. Had, we uh, did actually on the line of the glycemic index. The very first camp we did, um, I introduced people to sweet potato French fries. Oh, and sweet potatoes was one yeah. of the like seven missed health foods that no one eats. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, um, the thing about sweet potatoes or yams is they still give you that kind of yummy, mealy, Swedish type taste, um, potato type taste, but they, I think they have half the glycemic index, which really is all about how much is it going to jack your blood sugar. If it's got a low glycemic index, you can eat as much as you want of it. If it's higher, then you need to be careful. Yeah. And so we did sweet potato fries and we just chopped them up and rubbed olive oil on them and put them on a 
cookie sheet kind of thing and stuck them out over the over campfire. The fire. <laughs> How fun. People loved them. We just got the casserole in the oven and we okay. want to bake it at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Okay. So are we going to try this shepherd's pie? Is that what this is called? Yeah, well, Does anybody this know one, how it got named? The shepherd's pie, they said it was um, primarily because it was from lamb. And so mm. they would put the lamb as the meat in it. So what would be a, a appropriate portion size? I think one of the things Jody was pointing out is portion size is somewhat relative. If, if you're eating the right kinds of things, you could probably have much more of it to eat than if you're eating the wrong things. Exactly. Okay, so here goes. I'm going to see what it tastes like. Good. What do you think? Good. So we used Bragg's instead of salt, and we used this vegetable broth and flour to do instead the gravy. Of a, instead of mushroom soup. Versus instead. a cream of can of mushroom soup. And the mushroom soup is fatter, heavier, more calories. Sodium. Yeah. Sodium. Yep. Okay. And then we used frozen green beans versus canned, so that's a healthier step. And then we used the broth in to make the mashed potatoes creamy versus using the butter milk and, and milk butter. And yeah. Like that. So, and then we also, if you wanted to put cheese on it, like my kids like cheese, I would use mozzarella. And where do you put the cheese on? Very top? Yep, you sprinkle top. it on the top and it will melt. And I know a lot of people like the cheese on the top or um, they'll put tater tots on it, which is another bad choice. Very so bad. <laughs> to make a healthier choice, this is like the healthiest casserole for this particular dish. We've modified it as much as we could. All right. So what do you think? Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. So what's the next episode going to be? Uh, we're going to be visited, um, we're going to have a special appearance by uh, Dr. Vernon Finley and his children Jerome and Olivia. We're going to make family fun tacos and thank you for being here with us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. To watch for the next show. Res Chef is brought to you by Salish Kootenai College Community Health and Development and Ancestors Choice. For more information about Res Chef cooking shows, Ancestors Choice, the Traditional Living Challenge, or to contact the program, please call 406-275-4917.